here with Joe Rotella and we are making this absolutely amazing frame. Lots of dimension. I thought it was metal at first, but it's just wood, it's right? It's just wood. Scraps. Awesome. So let's get started. So I wanted my pieces all the way around that frame to be a half inch wide, but different heights. So I have some scrap lumber that's a half inch thick. And as if I cut, if I rip cut it, with the grain into strips, then I can flip it, that'll all be a half inch and give me different heights. Clever. So since I'm gonna use safety goggles. Okay, I'm putting I've on my I've got glasses uh, on, so I'm here. good. Since we're doing a rip cut, we don't use this, but we use the fence. And the first thing I need to do is adjust the blade so that it's just thick enough to go through the wood. I was gonna say, what we're seeing is the safety guide. That's the orange thing on top of here. And I have to lift it up so I can see the height of the blade. So I used a piece of tape here just to mark. I know I want something three quarters of an inch or less. Mm, clever, so you don't have to think about it every exactly. time. So I've got it connected to a vacuum. That's gonna pull out all the dust. Okay. And we're gonna turn it on. And let's cut. So now I have some strips, yeah. and I know they're a half inch wide, they're just different mm -hmm. heights. I'm gonna use the chop saw to cut them between three and three and a half inches. I've already marked it with a piece of tape to give me three. I'm using the fence to give me three and a half. And as long as I'm between there, we're gonna be good to go. And I can open up this little vise. I was gonna say, it's like a clamp. Yeah, and it'll hold everything nice and tight, it has a great grip, and off we go. <laughs> And I, I notice you go nice and slow because sometimes a chop saw will kick wood out and you want to be careful about that. Correct. There you go, now we have a couple little pieces. It's time to sand them. And I don't want all that sawdust and sand sanding makes a lot of sawdust. So I'm just gonna move the vacuum over. This is really nice because one of the things obviously about like doing woodcraft like in your home where you don't have a lot of ventilation and stuff necessarily is being able to attach Absolutely. the vacuum. So we'll turn the vacuum back on. <laughs> You need a lot of these. You need 80 in order to cover I was gonna say, why aren't you hand sawing them? But if you need 80, 80 of them, there's no way I'm hand sandpapering all of that. No. So next thing you wanna do is paint them a solid black. And why in, are you rubbing it with a, like an old cloth? I just wanna get any of the sawdust before I paint. Okay. So a little cotton rag works great for that. I was gonna say, that looks like an old t-shirt to me. And all I did is paint them a solid black. Okay. Then I just dry brushed on different metal colors. To Why don't give you that show effect. us how that effect works? Because I think one of the things that's so cool to me about the frame is that, you know, you don't have to be a metal worker to make something that looks like metal. You can just do it with wood. And you need very little of this metallic paint. So you're using two different colors of silver, yeah, essentially. Yeah. And why are you using two different colors of silver instead of one? Because I liked the variation in heights, the variation in lengths, the variation in colors. And to dry brush, we just touch it in, the brush in it, but you're gonna take most of it off and just kind of beat it on. Can I say beat it? Yes, and it's one of the things that I think does make it look like metal is instead of being, I think people have a tendency, myself included, to make things very like, Color it all the way. Be really good at coloring it. But if That's you do it. it a little bit sort of not well, it looks, it has that more metallic look. And I'll admit, I wore a rubber glove because I held it everywhere and they were just all over the place. <laughs> and I love cat food cups because okay. they're the perfect place to lay stuff to dry. Oh, that's a clever idea too. So then we take our frame. I painted the whole thing black, of mm -hmm. course. And then I put silver where I thought there might be a chance you'd see through it. So basically at the seams here the on the same approach, edge. just kind of brushed okay. it on. And I like a frame that has a broad edge. This has a three inch edge. 
So Sometimes I, I see these frames in the craft store and I always wonder because your picture's so little and your frame is so big, but if you're gonna do something to yeah. it, it makes a lot of sense. And they're perfect for collage, stenciling, painting. Plus, like finished frames like these are so expensive, it's unbelievable. So it's nice to be able to take an unfinished piece and really transform well, it. Well, and I get them at the thrift store. And just, you know, for a dollar, you can redo them. So I took a quarter inch piece of wood and I already cut it but to But I was going to say, like, let's talk about this edge because this isn't straight anymore. And so it means that this fits together like a glove, so to speak, exactly, exactly. the way that this is done. So how did you do that? Did you just sand that down? No. So let's take a couple pieces. I'm okay. going to swap places with you. Go back over to the chop saw. Safety glasses back on. And the chop saw has a swivel table and you can set it to any angle, but it has what's called positive stop. Hear how it clicked? Yeah. So we'll stop at certain like wild, you know, like widely used angles, common angles. Zero, 15, 30, and 45. Okay. So let's cut a 45 degree angle. That's what the corners are in a square. So you're just clamping and that in. I can lower the blade to see if I'm catching enough of the wood, if that makes sense. Yeah, it totally does. So you can eyeball it before you go. This so, is again like check twice, cut once. There you go. And that's why we're wearing safety glasses, because I saw that piece come flying there it goes. off. But now we have a nice 45 degree now, angle. Now would you paint this raw edge here or would you leave it? Because I'm a little fussy, I painted them all. <laughs> But the reality yeah, is that's they're going to be hidden because they're butted yes. up against one another. It's good to know but yourself. I'm a little fussy. Know yourself, Joe. So how do we, let me get out of so your way. How do we finish assembly. this up? Yeah. So I used a double-sided adhesive tape and I learned the first time I put tape down the whole edge. Mm -hmm. Well, then I had to have the mitered pieces ready and lay everything out at once because once you peeled it, it was exposed to dust and stuff. Now I learned, okay, let's just do this segment. Okay, so you're just doing it section by section. Section by section. So when the cat walks over it, you're still okay. I'm still good. And all I did was try to figure out, like, you know, I don't want those two together because they're kind of the same height. Okay. Does that... Yeah, you're looking for variety. So you're taking a moment to actually lay it out beforehand. I mean, one of the things I will say that I have learned from you, Joe, is I think you're a planner. <laughs> and you, you really do think long and hard about how you want things to look I before do. you just do them. You, you know what I mean? And I think, like, I really see in a lot of the paper engineering and the wood crafting that you do how important that is to take that extra time to really think about what you're doing. So I'm just adhering this just straight down the line. And the first pieces I put in are like a nice butt. So you're pushing it up against this piece that was the inner frame, essentially that was the mutter. So it's not just decorative, it's actually a practical edge as well. And Very there cool. you go. And that goes together so quickly. So, so I was gonna ask you though, like how do we deal with the corner areas? Well, when I we cut one mitered piece already. I would yeah. put all my double-sided adhesive tape. Mm -hmm. Then I put the first one. Then I'd put a second one. And I marked like that one's too long. Mm -hmm. So I'd mark it and go to the chop saw, cut it again. So you're just adjusting them sort of smaller and smaller yep. so that they'll fit in a tapered way into that corner. And I'm sure you could measure it and know in advance, but it was a lot easier <laughs> to just wing it. Okay. And then I know that we have a little bit of shiny color on the finish frame, so how do we add that? So this is a foiled paper that I cut into quarter inch strips. Okay. But I didn't like, this is not very rustic to me. This looks like such rough metal and this is not. <laughs> I thought you were gonna throw it away. Crumple it up. Cause now you have wrinkles. So, well, that we ever want wrinkles, Joe, is always and a surprise to me. Gluing this is kind of tiny and I have mm -hmm. fat fingers. So I ran it through a sticker machine. Cool, so, so it just has adhesive on the back and you can go ahead and just place it right on there. And you know what is amazing to me is how it keeps the wrinkles on there too. Now, did you really think about color placement and stuff like that when you were doing it? No, you know me, that's a silly question. I had to lay it all out in advance and move them <laughs> around. <laughs> and think about exactly what I, it was gonna look I want like. I your free spirit. I don't have it. Well, except that I think like the fact that you do sort of eyeball it as you go instead of pre-measuring everything is a kind of mix of our two styles. And if we look at the finished one now, I can see how beautiful it is. And you could certainly do this not only on a frame, you could do it on a box. You could do it, I mean, even in a doorway in your home. I think to make a plaque and use it as a substrate and then mount something in the center. Oh, yeah. It totally reminds really me cool. of tramp art, which is yeah. really cool, like this kind of really nice, uh, fussy 
woodwork, and as they say. And I was thinking of a, of a nerdy TV show I know of, that they have huh. a, a throne made of swords, mm -hmm. but it's that rough metal look, and I yes. thought, okay, that on the wall, different heights. And I like that you don't measure all those things. It's a breeze. Super cool.